Hypergamy doesn't care the children are biologically yours or not. <laughs> Hypergamy doesn't care if she was drunk, he was cute, and one thing led to another. <laughs> Hypergamy One of the most moving things from your books was Hypergamy doesn't care. Doesn't mm -hmm. give a f have you guys, do you have those quotes? Do you have those? Hypergamy doesn't care. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually interested to see what you guys think of this. So hypergamy is basically the denotative definition of hypergamy is a woman dating out of her own caste. It's, it's women's mating strategy. Yes. The connotative definition is uh, what you said. The alpha way bucks, beta bucks. There you go. Or Wait, what? Alpha <laughs> bucks, beta bucks. Okay. It's, al it's, it's cads versus dads. The hot guy on the phone can and party versus the guy who you want to go marry and, mm. and settle down with. Okay. And it's the guy you bring home to mom and dad and versus the guy that you hope never shows up when your parents you know. get home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when I talk about like men and women's mating strategies, men's mating strategy is very straightforward. It's unlimited access to unlimited sexuality. And if you don't, like, guys have fight me on this occasion. Like, oh, if you don't believe me, just look at well, why is free and 4k and streaming and it's like that's because it's unlimited access to unlimited and, and when, when you survey men who live in the castro homosexual men they talk about having 300 sexual partners in a year that is what that unlimited is what, access that is what, to unlimited that is what unfettered male libido looks for like. women it is alpha and beta bucks so it's like the the fun hot bad boy in your youth and the guy who is sexually aroused there's a difference between arousal and attraction if you ask a woman what are you looking for in a guy they're going to say well he's got to be nice he's got to love his family he's got to want kids he's got to like disneyland he's got to um be funny he's got to be intelligent he's got to make five million dollars he's got to he's got to have all these sort of things that are like they, well first of all they sound they sound like you're being prudent about everything but if i say what is arousing to you in a guy oh he's got to have you know, uh, t what, what do you got? 26 inch guns there? Uh, you know, he's got you know, V taper, uh, chiseled jaw line. He's got to be at least six foot tall. He's and so those are the arousal. Arousal is different than attraction. So, but the reason for that is because all bucks, beta bucks. There's the arousal side of hypergamy, and then there is the long term security side, which is the beta bucks. Provisioning, protection, and parental investment mm -hmm. is the opposite side. So, as women get older, they tend to reprioritize those mm -hmm. things. So maybe when you were 23, it was all about, man, he's hot. I got to get with this guy. It's, it's, this, look, this looks like a good sexual opportunity versus when you get to be 29, 30, 31, or 37. Um, and then you're going, okay, now I can take looks and I, can, I still want a hot guy. But looks is not number one on the list. It's number two or three or whatever it is. He's got to have $5 million. That's at the top of the list now. And so it's, it's more about the long-term security that, that women are looking for. That's why I say the hypergamy is basically the fundamentally the balance between alpha fucks, arousal, short-term genetic benefits. I want to have his babies versus, okay, this guy is a good long-term bet for my future. He's got a lot of money. He's not as fun as the guy I've back in college, but he's a good bet for my future because he's going, he's going to be a winner or he is a winner. He's got a lot of money. He's not as cute as the guy I used to bang back in the day, but I can, I can sort of, put, uh, not, but my priorities are different so I can get with him. That's the beta bucks side of hypergamy. And so what I talk about in hypergamy doesn't care is like there are things that guys believe are buffers or uh, ways of sort of like doing something, doing value added that is going to in some way convince women to not be hypergamous. And that's why I, this is like one of my number one most agitating posts that I've ever done because I'm like, hypergamy doesn't care about your wedding vows. Hypergamy mm -hmm. doesn't care about the times, how many times you uh, did your homework, did homework with your kids. I'm curious what you guys think about this. So the idea of hypergamy meaning like it's not the highest status woman, man that a woman can get. It's the highest status man that a woman can't get. And so that's the reason why you see, like there's no reason for all these women to be going, hanging out with like Mickey Mace or Dan Bilzerian and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio because they're not gonna get him to settle down. Some women think they're gonna get him mm -hmm. to settle down. But why would they even be with him in the first place? Because they're seeking the validation of a man they can't get. Again, so how many women would sleep with Jason Momoa if they just had a chance to do it one time? They would still do it even though they mm -hmm. can't get him, they would still do it, right? Because there, there's a certain level of attraction. Hypergamy doesn't care about how great a father you are to your kids. Hypergamy doesn't care about how you rearranged your college majors and career choices in, in life to better accommodate her. Hypergamy doesn't care how inspired or fulfilled you feel as a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> 
Hypergamy doesn't care that you moved across four states to be closer to your long distance relationship girlfriend. Hypergamy doesn't care how supportive you've been uh, of her decisions or if you identify as a male feminist. <laughs> uh, hypergamy doesn't care about the sincerity of your religious convictions or your aspirations to a higher purpose. Hypergamy doesn't care about those words you said at your wedding. Hypergamy doesn't care about how you funded her going back to college to find a more rewarding career for herself. Hypergamy doesn't care how great a guy you are for adopting the children she had with other men. Hypergamy doesn't care about your divine forgiving nature in excusing her youthful indiscretions. Hypergamy doesn't care about how uh, about your magnanimity in assuming responsibility for her student loans and credit card debt after you're married. Hypergamy doesn't care if he was the uh, your best friend. Hypergamy doesn't care about uh, coffee in bed uh, you bring her or how great a cook you are. Hypergamy he doesn't care about all those chick flicks you sat through with her and claimed that you liked. <laughs> Hypergamy doesn't care about how well you uh, you do your part in household chores. Uh, hypergamy doesn't care about how much you your, your or her family and her friends like you. Hypergamy doesn't care if you think you're a good guy or about how convincing your arguments are for your sense of honor. Hypergamy doesn't care whether uh, the children are biologically yours or not. <laughs> Hypergamy doesn't care if she was drunk, he was cute, and one thing led to another. <laughs> Hypergamy doesn't care about how sweet, funny, or intellectual you are. Hypergamy does not Shit, care so if you are what? if you never it's saw worse. it coming. Yeah. Hey, listen, Hyper fellas up there. I lost you after the fifth one. Hold on. Hypergamy yeah. doesn't care how many videos you make saying you hate Andrew T. Women are not going to sleep with you because yes, of Yes, exactly. Okay, you can't negotiate desire. You're attracted to a man for these certain reasons, and all the reasons he just said does not make you want to sleep with him. That was kind of the point that mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not to put words in no, your mouth. But it's like, doesn't matter how many times you take out the trash, doesn't matter how many forgiving you are. <laughs> that, you saw that video, that that shot I, I, I showed you where it was this guy, he was holding up a sign, he goes, I forgive your indiscretions, and I don't care if the kids <laughs> that was a, that was a, yeah. That was a hoax, uh, but yeah. Okay. But still, it. it's funny but, because of a reason. But, but anyway, the, the point was, like, you can forgive her indiscretion. She's never going to forgive your weakness that's that's the issue right so mm -hmm. that that's the problem and that's i'm just curious what you guys thought you lost or lost after too, the many, too many people think that doing like value added things are a buffer against high programming and again it goes back to genuine desire so the things that you do like chores like chore play for it that's an easy one right mm -hmm. Guys think that if they can negotiate desire and we're both on the same page and we're just going to have this, you know, I, I want, we're going to sit down at the table and we're going to discuss how you're going to fuck me and how I'm going to be a better guy because, uh, because of all that, that is, ends up becoming obligation. Genuine, negotiating genuine desire always leads to obligated, obligated. compliance. I don't really feel like you can. Genuine desire is genuine desire. If yeah. you're negotiating something, it's not genuine like Absolutely. that. In Another regards to desire. To Oh, I'm sorry. I Go couldn't ahead. hear you. I was going to say another way to look at it is like all the things you listed off would be reasons that we divorce men. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's like he funded my college. Why would we divorce him over that? So it's like a lot of so things it? that you don't really think about. It's, it's, it's what I call relational equity. Like a guy yeah. think, well, how could she divorce me? I, I'm Tom Brady. I make awesome. uh. how, how could she divorce me? I uh, read to our kids before bedtime. I have been at every piano recital. That I've been sounds gainfully like something employed. Something like since girls the do when guys cheat. Mm -hmm. Like, why would he cheat on me? Mm -hmm. they, they think it's a it. I'm the best mom ever. Yeah, but, I take, you, I birthed his children. But you understand why they cheat anyway, right? I understand why yeah. they okay, cool. cheat. That's the thing, like the statements he makes, I've had to explain to guys before, because they're like, what are you talking about? Why would she ever cheat on me? I paid for this, this, and this. And I'm like, that's why she's cheating on you. Because you're like, nice. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not even just <laughs> you're nice. Like, you aren't doing the things that, like, uh, I will tell you, I've had situations before where, this, like years ago, where I like I, this girl came over to my place, and I had no intention of hooking up with her or whatever. And I was like, hey, you can stay in the, the guest room. And so she's like, oh, I can stay in the guest room? Cool, just follows me into my room. And I've had situations before where I was like, hey, you can stay in my room. And she's like, no, I'm sleeping on the couch. I've had situations before, like some of the photo shoots that we do before, I tell the guys, you tell the girls that they have to show up in lingerie, They're, some of them will be like, you, I'm not coming. If you tell the girls they can shoot in whatever they want, they'll shoot nude. This is one of the situations so where you're, tr you're trying to create mm -hmm. this so level, true. you're trying to create this level of obligation and that's the that's thing, man, just charge it to the game. 
is let people do whatever they want. That's true. That's the issue. Like the, the obligation. That, man, I'll tell you the one other thing. CJ, we've talked about this before. Where I'll have a girl and she'll like fly out to see me several times. And then as soon as I start playing for, paying for her flights, bro, everything changes. Mm -hmm. Every All of a sudden it's like, what is this? And why can't we go here? And you don't call me enough. And I was like, wait, everything was cool before. Now I'm mm -hmm. paying for your flights. And now you're, you're mm -hmm. tripping on this. You flew her out. Huh? You, you flew her out. 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 So it's better when you don't fly her out? I don't know, but I do know this. It really sucks <laughs> as a man sometimes when I start treating someone well and then they start changing their behavior towards me because yeah. then it's like, wait, this. so things were functioning better. You, I mean, you know my history. It things pisses me off because that's my like love language. I love when people pay for things for same. me, but yeah. I have heard a lot of men say the same thing, that when I finally start doing the things that she wants me to do or she presumably would want a woman yeah. would want a man to do that's when R they will kind of start getting an attitude we're probably more used to some kind of abusive or unhealthy yeah, relationship I think because, yeah. it's because it's a transaction but, there's no genuine desire it's a transactional mm -hmm. uh, if that's why mm -hmm. if that's why but i mean like if i would like somebody and i wanted to be with that like intimate with them mm -hmm. and they fly me out that's not going to make me want to be not into it, yeah. 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 Any more or less. Yeah. For me, that's more of a luxury. You're getting so an extra more sloppy blow job yeah. 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 Richard Hart was on a couple weeks ago, and he started talking about, well, the girls will like me, and then they'll come and they'll see that I own like seven supercars and like ten million dollars worth of watches, and all of a sudden they don't. They were trying to make me wait. They change all this kind of stuff, and the whole thing changes. And I was like, yeah, I mean, that's that's what I've seen. That personally, the same thing happened. So it, it just makes it very difficult when. Uh, oh, we talked about this before. You remember I said this? Every time a girl goes on a date with a guy who's like a perfect gentleman and she makes him wait and then she goes off and fucks her toxic ex, mm -hmm. she makes the world 1% worse. Mm -hmm. Because what she's doing, is she's, I agree. she's rewarding the behavior of the toxic ex mm -hmm. and she's punishing every dude who treats him like a gentleman. I've seen this happen so many times like firsthand. So now what happens? Now, honestly, that's where the beta male revolution, that book came from. Mm -hmm. it's, that's exactly what was going on. They kept getting treated wrong and kept getting, getting told that something else was the case. You know what I'm saying? That's because they believed in the idea that if I do these things, then I will be rewarded. Right. With sex. Right. Men, men are like, we're problem solvers, but we're deductive problem solvers. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means like, okay, I need sex. So here's the, here's the, the logical deductive flow. I need sex. You have sex. Therefore I have to ask you, what do I have to do to get sex? Oh, I have to do these things. Okay. You go and do those things. Where's the sex? And then it's not there because mm -hmm. there's your, because you went and did those things for you rather than just being about it when you first met that person. That's the difference between the two mm. is if you're doing something to get it, then it becomes a transactional, a, a transactional mean, relationship. They should just take it. No. <laughs> Wait, just take it? What do you mean? Maybe they should just take it. Well, there's a difference. There's a difference between transactional We're about sex. to get me too like a <laughs> You gotta go take it. There's a difference. There's a difference between transactional sex and validational sex. So there's the guy who has five million dollars. You're gonna f him because he has five million dollars, right? Whether it's like uh, on the table or if it's prostitution, obviously. But they're by by inch or by mile. Transactional sex is I do these things, you reward me with sex. This is the A plus B equals C. Okay. Then there's the validational sex, which is I saw this really hot guy in the club. I was drunk. He was cute, and one thing led to another. I really wanted. To this guy because I felt like I was in the moment I was aroused by him and I he those are the guys who are like the same night lay guys as opposed to the guy that you would make wait for sex. the reason why the sex is never worth the wait is because the guy who would wait in the first place is not the guy you want to fuck in the first place yeah because if he point. was you would have had sex yeah, with him in the phone cannon true. party <laughs> yeah it's really hard if I would if I just hypothetically if I were go to go out on a date with a girl and after the first date, she's like, I want to make you wait. And then I ask her, so how long did you make your last boyfriend wait? And she said, I didn't. You guys see the problem? Well, okay, so now when I'm dating, though, I have to tell you, like, even if I'm super attracted to him and I want to rip his clothes so you've off. you changed now. No, I've, I told you, I only slept with mm -hmm. the guy. And it, honestly, it wasn't even the first night. It was the second night. But that's neither here nor there. Um the reason why I make him wait is because, yeah, I want to rip his clothes off and be with him, but there has to be more than that. Sure. So I want to know that of there's course. substance. Is this someone that I want to hang out with? Mm -hmm. Is this someone that that I would, you know, potentially bring home with me? What would I be able to spend multiple nights with you? So there has mm -hmm. to be more than just the sex for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all those things that you just listed off right there, the more than just sex, those are all the things you are attracted to. The sex part, like, okay, he's hot, he looks really yeah. good, I want to get with him, that's the arousal side of it. If you have a guy who is not that arousing to you, but he has all those other qualities, are you going to 
that guy or are you going to make him wait for sex and you're going to make him like jump through the hoops and, and make no, rules it's, for it's him it's really late <laughs> <laughs> probably not yeah I'm, mm. I'm a little a little sleepy over here okay uh, <laughs> right. yeah, we should, we should 